Hey guys, I'm filming this video on my phone for the first time ever just because I think the quality of my phone is better than my actual camera which sucks. I just need to get money <laughs> to buy a new camera but I don't have it. Jesus, why is it so bright? Okay, so um, today I just wanted to sit down and do a Q&A because I actually have plan to do this for like super long. I have been kind of trying to collect questions but it's really difficult. I get questions all the time but never like all at once and some of them I feel like maybe everybody would like to know the answer to this so I kind of try to collect them but then they go like unanswered for a real long time so yeah we'll see how this goes. Ah also sorry if I'm constantly looking at myself this is so weird. So I don't even know who these are from sorry I just wrote them down but the first question is what's been the absolute best thing about your year in Japan? This is really hard to answer because there are a lot of things that are really great and honestly just thinking back nothing like not one event or something in particular like stands out. For me the best thing was um, to get to travel so much. It definitely was like the furthest place I've ever been from Austria and it is just so different from Europe. And before this, I'd never been outside of Europe, so it's it's a completely different culture, it's a completely different landscape and everything, and just seeing all of that was so amazing, and I am so grateful that I got to go there, I got to experience it, I got to travel around the country a lot. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I did like a bunch of like travel diaries videos um, from Japan, some are on my vlog channel, but not that many, most are actually in this channel still, so... If you want, you can go and check them out. I have a playlist, I'll link it down below. Honestly, it's one of the most beautiful countries ever and I really want to go back. Oh. Next question, what do you miss most about Austria? That's kind of, see, this is what I mean by it's been a while since people have asked me this. I can only say what I missed the most back when I was in Japan, um, which was probably obviously like my friends and family and my boyfriend aside I think honestly the thing I miss the most is having everybody always understand me now this is sounds a little weird it's like not a material thing but like that feeling of knowing that you can go out and do whatever you want and everybody is gonna understand what you want and you will understand them it's like such a comforting feeling and it makes it feel really secure and like if something happened I can communicate that you know if I have a problem I can communicate that and that's just not what I felt in Japan obviously I mean I knew some Japanese and it got better throughout the year so I probably could have done most things by the end of it um, even if there have been problems or whatever but it's just not the same and yeah I miss that the most I think what's your plan for maintaining the Japanese you have right now um, again this is definitely asked a while ago because my Japanese is so bad <laughs> I haven't done basically anything in a really long time. Oh my god, the light! Just stop! Just stop with the light! <laughs> I haven't done anything, like any studying, anything for a very long time. And now I kind of, I don't have any more Japanese classes. Light, stop. <laughs> it's like it always stops when I do that. I don't have any more Japanese classes because I got credit for most of the ones that I would have had, when I, for all of the ones I would have had from Japan. So they're just not a thing and that means I don't really have any reason to sort of push myself and it sucks I know I should have more like an Intrinsic motivation or whatever, but I just don't I'm so lazy. I know it sucks. I'm a Horrible horrible at this. I do have some reason to get back into it because I have a seminar We have to write a paper for and we have to use like Japanese sources. So it's gonna be it. But oh my god. I wish I wasn't this lazy. I don't know. I th feel like after Japan, I just kind of, I was quite burned out. Honestly, it's quite exhausting to sort of, for your brain, to always have to like work on this language or like even like in normal conversation, even having normal conversations for me was basically like working on it. And obviously that's the good thing about being in a different country, but also it's really, really exhausting. And honestly, like right after I came back, improving or maintaining my Japanese was literally the last thing that I cared about. <laughs> and while that is kind of sad, um, that's how it was. And I want to be honest with you about this. Um, I do have plans obviously to get back into it. I want to become like a translator or interpreter or something so it's not like I'm just gonna leave the language as it is or as it was but um yeah I brought some books with me though from Japan. That's one tip if you're in a different country and like 
Um, the language learning books from there are usually cheaper if you buy them right where you are, especially for my university that, that like wrote and published their own books. So they're so much cheaper there than they would be in Austria. So I just brought some of them with me to come here. And now I have them and I, anytime I want, I can get back into it. So that's a plus. That's what I'm going to be doing hopefully pretty soon. Next question. What is the next language you plan to learn? I don't know. Honestly, this is one thing. I think I'm going to do a separate video about this. I felt I had this huge expectation on myself that I would be fluent in Japanese when I got back because it was so easy for me with English. And even with like learning French and Spanish, even though I'm not fluent in them, I knew if I had like put in a little more time, I would have been so quickly. I think what the thing with Japanese is that it's just such a different language. You don't have nothing to compare it to, nothing to like help you learn it. Um, like, you know, via the root of like knowing Latin, for example. Like via the root of already having known Latin, um, French and Spanish were just so much easier to pick up. And then you have like all these words that are so similar to even German and English and all that. Um, so that was why it was so easy to kind of get started and to feel like you were making so much progress. And even now, and not having touched either of those in a really long time, I can understand a lot just because it just sounds so similar to things that I do know. It is definitely not the same with Japanese. I honestly don't think that I can get started on another language anytime soon before I don't get over this bump with Japanese to becoming fluent, basically. But I do want to learn the Scandinavian language for no apparent reason. I think Scandinavian languages are pretty cool. And also Russian. I don't know why, but Russian. Oh my god. Stop with the lighting. <laughs> what was this lighting? Ah, it's so bright. Wait. That's better. It's not. It doesn't work this time. Why is it not? To getting fluid, basically. Fluid? 